the visible flare of methane release. Scientists say this highly potent greenhouse gas has been responsible for about half the human-induced warming of the planet we've experienced so far. Now, a global partnership to tackle emissions by plugging leaks and covering landfill sites is being announced at the COP26 climate conference in Glasgow. The initiative, led by the US and the EU, pledges to cut emissions of the gas by at least 30% by 2030. But China, Russia and India, some of the world's top methane emitters, have not signed up. Some of the big emitters need to join the pledge. So China, Russia, for example, you know, if we're going to, to achieve those, those big reductions that we need, then they, they need to come on board as well. The loss of forests around the world, estimated to be responsible for about 15% of greenhouse gas emissions, has been the subject of this crucial climate summit's first major deal. Countries who signed the agreement, including Brazil, Russia, China and Indonesia, represent 85% of the world's forests. The pledge and the £15 billion behind it has been broadly welcomed. But deforestation has actually increased since a similar pledge was launched in 2014. And it's not yet clear exactly how those who cut down forests to make money will be provided with the financial incentive to protect these vital carbon-storing ecosystems instead. This is a hugely ambitious pledge from world leaders because of the sheer scale of it. We have destroyed over 50% of land-based ecosystems and this announcement is not just about protecting forests to keep them standing, it's actually about starting to restore and put so much uh, of our, our wild landscapes back. Some scientists remain sceptical of the progress here. A survey of climate scientists suggests that many are not confident that global emissions can be cut quickly enough to avoid a climate catastrophe. It's a mixture of promise and pessimism here in Glasgow. While there's been some early steps forward and key agreements on issues like methane emissions and deforestation, those are voluntary agreements and they're going to be put to the test at the same time that scientists say we're running out of time to slash emissions. In the gulf between words and action, the global temperature continues to rise. But as the leaders conclude their speeches and the negotiators take over, there's much more talking to do. Victoria Gill, BBC News, Glasgow.